We have up next from the Belize Fisheries Department, uh, Ms. Felicia Cruz, who will be um, giving you a small presentation on what they do. And I do believe she will be sharing a little on Hecate Laws. Yes, right. So I will give the time to her and she will be with you. Good morning, good afternoon, sorry, I'm full and tired. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. My name is Felicia Cruz. I'm a fisheries officer within the policy and planning unit of the fisheries department. Um, I've, I'm really here to tell you about our inland fishery program and about our Hikiti regulations. While the fisheries department has a large mandate and our operational area extends well within our sea limits, um, for the purpose of this wildlife ambassador program, I'm going to talk about our inland component. Um, but basically, we have uh, legislation that has empowered the fisheries department and our officers to really uh, tackle a lot of the violations and fisheries offenses um, in country. With the most recent legislation being the Fisheries Resources Act, number seven of 2020, which was essentially um, enacted in. February 2020. Um, this reform legislation does have provisions for new regulations to govern Hikiti. However, those regulations have not been developed as yet. And therefore, um, we have passed legislation that has really assisted us to tackle the issue with Hikiti in country. Um, our mission statement is really to provide the country and the people of Belize with the best possible management of its aquatic and fisheries resource with a view to optimize the present and future benefits through efficient and sustainable management. <clears throat> Institutionally, we have different arms within the fisheries department. We have our administrative arm, the policy and planning unit, um, ecosystems management unit, which really focuses mostly on uh, marine protected areas and marine reserve management. Um, we have the capture fisheries unit that looks at data collection and is really our scientific arm within the department. And it is actually within that arm that we have our inland uh, fishery program established. Uh, importantly though, we have our conservation compliance unit, which is the enforcement arm for the fisheries department. And they really work hand in hand with the capture fisheries and other staff as well to ensure that the inland fisheries program or that component is really tackled. Um, for turtle management, which I'm focusing on, um, we have regulations both for marine turtles and for freshwater turtles, uh, specifically the hikiti, and that is given its status, its international status, which is really um, endangered so critically endangered, and that's on the IUCN list. Um, it is also a CITES regulated species. So in order to move that animal um, out of Belize, you need a CITES permit. And um, I'll be very honest, it's very difficult to get a CITES permit from the fisheries department for Hikiti. And that is because um, it's against the law to commercialize that animal. You should not buy it, you should not sell it. It's really a subsistence species. Um, however, there is a high demand for Hikiti, um, and there is, of course, overhunting within inland areas, specifically the Belize River Valley area. Um, so in terms of its range and location, um, Belize really is a stronghold for Hikiti, but it has been identified and found within this Central American range from Mexico, Guatemala, and Honduras. Um, the mating is known to be from September to December. Um, some reports have indicated that mating does take place all up to February. Laying is really from March to May, and they can produce between two to 20 eggs. Um, it really takes them between 15 to 17 years to reach sexual maturity. And so its protection in its juvenile or pre-adult stage is very important so that this animal can contribute back to the environment. And it has a very high tolerance to brackish water or salt water, um, but they're predominantly found in freshwater ecosystems. 
this is just um, an image of the male Hecate and the female Hecate. Um, the males are quite more distinguished than the female, and that is really because of their bright yellow head. Um, in their juvenile state, it's very hard for you to distinguish between a female and a male, and that is because of those traits. Um, for our regulations, like I was mentioning, we shouldn't have it in, the, we do have regulations. Um, you shouldn't have more than three of them in, at one time in your position, no more than five in a vehicle. Um, the closed season is really for the month of May. And we do have regulations for size limits for um, females only. There was a lot of discrimination back then. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Yes, so we have other legislation that talks about fine and 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 um, the sale the sale and purchase of sea, of turtles, which is really illegal. Um, we've worked over the years with different institutions like Lamanai Research Center, which has which have helped us to really capture this information in educational flyers, um, and it's it's just to spread the word to the communities so that they know about our regulations. Um, we do have some proposed changes that we would want to see um, develop as we move towards um, those regulatory developments, which is really to shorten the amount that a person may have within their possession. So currently you're allowed to have three, 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 three. Um, so when you think about it, you having three, you having three, you having three, you having three, it all adds up eventually. And so what we've been proposing is a reduction to one per person. It still does not satisfy the greater issue of illegal um, fishing, but it is something that we are working towards. Um, we also have been proposing um, an extension for the closed season. And this is really to capture that March. As we all know, um, during Rutamaya, upcoming Rutamaya, um, there's an increase in um, illegal harvesting of not only Hikiti, but other uh, inland species. Um, so this is something that we also want to extend. We want to shorten the amount that you should have within a vehicle. Um, and we also want to propose some regulation for size limits for males because integration is very important to us. Um, the Fisheries Department also has education and awareness program that we go out and we try to sensitize the community. We're out there for Utamaya, which is really the height, heightened time for us to really talk about um, Hikiti or inland fishery in general. Um, if you guys have been out there, then you know that the presence in terms of enforcement and education is not really as strong as it used to be. And that has been ever since the pandemic. And, and I believe that many government institutions have struggled um, since, since then to really um, take action um, within these area. Nevertheless, um, we do have research that's ongoing. Um, we have a large consortium of committed scientists, foreign and local, that really put a lot of effort into understanding and studying this species. Um, there will be uh, talks from B3. They do have a, a captive program in the South. Um, the Fisheries Department works with them on this, and there's a lot of very useful information um, that has emanated from those research. Again, these are just some educational information that we continue to publish. In terms of um, enforcement, um, the responsibility is really to sanction violators and to discourage any kind of illegal activities within this space. Um, what my team normally does is they conduct different inland patrols and operations. Um, they gather intelligence, work with the local police department, the village police officers, um, the grassroots community, like the uh, community baboon sanctuary in the Belize River Valley. Um, we do regular searches of establishments within that area to ensure that this commodity is not within their freezer for sale. 
Um, we do roadblocks. We partake in joint operations with other agencies, and of course, the arrest and prosecution component. Our patrol zone is really focused towards the Belize River Valley area, and that's because of the heightened activity within that area, not only for Higiti, but for other um, illegal wildlife offenses. Um, we partner with the Belize Audubon Society, with the police department, and with Tide in the South. And the typical type of violations that would um, emanate from Higiti um, would be possession of more than the allotted amount, um, the sale and the purchase of this species, um, its possession within the close season, the possession of illegal female hickety, and of course, using nets to take hickety, which is illegal. In terms of uh, the department's reflection, um, just going back to the challenges that we've been faced as a nation, um, where we basically experience a lot of disruption in our day-to-day -day activity um, in terms of uh, our environmental challenges. And this has really been brought on by the ongoing effects of climate change, but also um, we've experienced a lot of challenges, which was as the result of COVID. And these changes have really created a lot of um, challenges that has trickled into the fishery sector with a lot of illegal activities. Um, one that was recent and more common was a video that was circulating on TikTok, um, where they had individuals capturing large quantities of tikiti, and it was being showcased all over social media. I don't have that video, but it was reported on, and really what that activity did was it signaled the government to now bring its partners together and for us to look at a way where we can take collective action to this problem, given that the fisheries department, while we are mandated to tackle it, we also must patrol the entire fisheries waters, sea waters, including the inland waters. And it's a huge challenge for us when we are so limited with resources, both personnel and financial. Um, nevertheless, um, a lot of effort has been placed in education, in research, and what all of this has really uh, done is it has brought practitioners together, and we have been working for the most part um, since last year on a draft conservation management plan for Higiti in Belize. And really what that plan will be is it's going to look at a coordinated and integrated approach on how we're supposed to tackle the issue with Hikiti and inland fisheries management, but specifically with Hikiti, looking at science, looking at enforcement, looking at education, looking at strengthening collaboration, declaration of inland reserves to ensure protection within these rivers and these other systems. And so the department believes that this management plan will be completed um, within this year. And we're hoping that we can definitely begin to implement the activity as we now move post COVID, out of COVID, and our lives are becoming a little bit more normalized. But really that, that is um, the efforts from the department. And how can you, play your role, your part. You can report these offenses to the Fisheries Department. Our phone numbers, 224-4552-223-2187. You can also send us an email. You can contact the Police Department or your village police station. Or if you want to remain anonymous, you can definitely call Crime Stoppers Belize. Um, you can also help us by spreading the word and by following the law, because we love citizens that follow the law and respect the law. And that's it. Thank you very much.